Alrighty, making a little video here today. Uh, I hope this turns out right. I'm uh, up here on the hillside behind our place building some fence. And this is rough terrain up here. And it's got an old barbed wire fence. And it has just, uh, the wires are so rotted. I fixed parts of it up and the wires will break and just everything. So I've decided to pretty much just put a new uh, fence in. I was going to take you along and show you what I'm doing up here. I'm just using the trees, using the natural terrain and stuff to run the fence and along right pretty close where the original fence was. And uh, I'll show you. I did have electric fence I put up here last year along where I didn't have barbed wire and stuff. Well, that electric fence limbs would fall on it and it'd go down. And I had to, I don't like walking up here in the summer because we have rattlesnakes here in Oklahoma. And there's a lot of dens up here. Used to, the people would come from the university and come around here and look for snakes. And I don't like to see them. I'm not frightened to death of snakes, but I don't want to get bit by one. And we do have some big old rattlers around here and lots of copperheads. So I felt like I'd get this fence fixed up. So hopefully I don't have to come up here much in the summer. I bought me some snake boots last year, but uh, they're still kind of scary. <laughs> I don't want to get bit. But anyway, this mic in this camera uh, is not a fancy mic, and this wind is probably hard for you to uh, see what I'm doing. So anyway, I'm going to go along here and film just a little bit of the fence and try to talk to you. If it's too uh, muffled with the wind, I'll just have to play music along and show you. But here's uh, kind of where we are going along with the trees, and I'm going to put a gate. Uh, I've ran new strands all down through yonder it's a long ways through there and uh, uh, I don't know if it's a mile that I've ran fence or not but I'm just about to finish up and here is uh, uh, some wires there but I'm just going along the trees up through here and I cleared me a little pathway for my four wheeler and uh, this uh, you can see how I stapled it to the trees um, and you want to leave your staples loose when you nail to your trees, uh, like this here, if, if you can see that, the staple is not way down in there. You don't want it enough that it'll pop out, but you want it loose so these wires can go back and forth because this old tree here, it's a big tree, and it goes way up there, and don't look like much right now without leaves, but it gets all those leaves on it, it's going to start running back and forth, and uh, it'll stretch and break your wires off. Now, eventually, the tree will grow around the wires and I'll show you here what happens now this fence here was uh, built uh, probably well longer than I've been alive and I'm 49 years old but you can see that bob wire the tree grew around that wire it didn't hurt the tree that's a little tree that's an older tree there and the wires it's all grown into that and it didn't hurt anything but uh, that's the old fence over there, this is the new one, and I decided I'd just run new wires down through here, like I said, because that old wire is uh, 50 plus years old, uh, here's an old uh, T-post, probably been, someone probably was repairing the fence, because my grandfather, who had this before, he, uh, I never knew him to use skill fence posts. And I'll go down through here sometimes and I'll find an old wooden post. I'll show you one right here. This year, there was a big fire come through here last year and destroyed a lot of this. But that is one of the old fence posts. And I would say my dad, my grandpa, and my dad too maybe helped with it. But they uh, used trees around here they'd cut down and make for fence posts. And uh, a lot of these will still have steeples in them and some of them will have belling wires. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, the hay used to be wrapped in belling wires. Some still do that, but now we use round bells and it has wrap on it. A man, uh, my grandpa used to tell a story that a guy come into the feed store and he says, uh, he's need to buy some more hay. And they said, well, you, we thought you had lots of hay. And he said, well, I do, but I've ran out of belling wire. <laughs> so belling wire used to be a, a really... Uh, neat thing here to use to hold your uh, uh, to your post and stuff to tie off to or if you had a broken 
fence. I thought I might find an old broken strand through here and show you, but the fence goes way on down through that direction, and I'm not going to walk the whole deal. I've walked it uh, each time for each strand, even though I have a unroller on my four-wheeler that helps me to unroll the wire out here. But uh, anyway, I uh, made me a trail where I bring my four-wheeler up through here and the uh, unroller that I built. Uh, it works out really good. Uh, there's a guy on uh, YouTube called Oki Rob. He's here in Oklahoma somewhere. And I've watched some of his videos. I really like his videos. And he does some ranching. And he had made him a homemade unroller for his four-wheeler. And uh work looked really neat. And he showed how to use it and stuff. So I thought I'd make me one. Mine's not exactly like his. Uh, I had a used the materials I had around the farm and I made me an unroller for it. But anyway, uh, when you have cows, even if it's just a milk cow, we've got beef cows, a few. Um, we're not big time ranchers, but you want to keep your cows in. And they're too expensive to let just run loose everywhere. And also I have really good neighbors on this side of the fence where I'm standing and walking. This is my neighbors. On the other side is mine. And this is really rough. I don't know if you can see my house is way in the distance uh, uh, down there. And uh, anyway, I can't get seem to zoom in here today like I wanted to. But my uh, house is way, way down there and uh, in the holler. And, uh, and I, when I get back and do the video, maybe you can see it. Over there is the Arkansas River way in the distance you might be able to see that water and uh, so the cows are mostly down there but in the spring and summer they come up on this hillside and there's some little fields on the side of these hills and down in the valley where they can eat grass up here there's not a lot but they'll still come up here and in the fall they'll eat a few acorns up here and stuff but uh, anyway I wanted to be able to come up here and utilize this little bit of pasture it's not uh, a big deal but it's cost me some sweat and labor, but this old fence here ought to last here the rest of my lifetime. Uh, everything I build, I'm trying to fix uh, to stay for the rest of my life. Right here is my uh, unroller, if you can see it. And uh, I got a pipe goes up through there. And I used a uh, uh, blade off of a disc. I ordered a new blade for my discs and blades and they were the wrong size so I've utilized them for other things so I just set the wire down over that pipe and it unrolls and does very good and I put pipes that slide up in here and I've got a little pin right over here I can pull out and I can take this whole deal off in just a second if I need to and this is a little bit about my four-wheeler I've got uh, uh, my tools on here got my a handy dandy pistol if I need it. Uh, not many snakes or anything to worry about this time of year, but if I did, I'd grab that and try to shoot the snake. Last year I was uh, working up here and uh, I got down here and there was a snake and I said, that's no problem, I'll just get my pistol out and I'll just shoot that old snake. Well, I got it out, pulled the trigger, guess what? It was unloaded. An unloaded gun won't do you much good. But anyway, I don't like to leave them laying around loaded for safety purposes. If I've got one loaded, it's usually kept up somewhere, but when I'm on the four-wheeler, I'll usually load it and have it ready. And I thought it I had, but I hadn't. So you always treat a gun like it's loaded anyway. That's number one safety rule if you use a firearm. Um, but anyway, I get up here, got these fences built. I'm going to put a little gate. I already mentioned that right across here, an old wire gate. I'm going to bring a wood post up here and hook it over here to this side. So if the cows were to get out over on my neighbors, or if I needed to go over here to this side, I could drive my four-wheeler down through here and uh, check the fences because it's just too rough on my side of the fence to uh, get down through here. There's just rocks and ledges and uh, I actually over here working on the fence a while back I turned my four-wheeler over so when you're on a four-wheeler make sure you use common sense and safety because uh, these will turn over it didn't hurt my four-wheeler none and it didn't hurt me 
uh, thank the Lord. I carry a walkie-talkie with me so I can contact my wife and son back at the house. But when this thing turned over, I had my coat in one of these baskets, and I couldn't get to my walkie-talkie. And the foiler was kind of on me, but it wasn't hurting me. I just had trouble getting out. But I got out, and I got to my walkie-talkie. The foiler was turned over on top of my coat. Finally got to walk, rocking the uh, four-wheeler and got my coat out, got my radio, radioed my son. I said, come and help me. Help, I'm falling and I can't get up. And he come up and helped me. We flipped the four-wheeler back over and it didn't hurt the four-wheeler. It didn't hurt me. Thank the Lord. The Lord was looking out for me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It ain't much. may not interest you about putting in fences and doing work around, but it's so beautiful out today. It's March uh, 7th. It's kind of chilly, and it certainly is windy. Yesterday, we had over 50 mile per hour winds here, and I was afraid to get out in the woods yesterday because of the trees uh, blowing, and it's still pretty windy today, but not like it was yesterday. Anyway, God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful day.